of any time. <laughs> uh, still in many iterations of it. Um, San Juan Chi stands in front of a neatly groomed hedge, his arms rigidly at his side, his fist clenched so tightly around the camera cable release that his skin pulls tautly over his knuckles. He cheats slightly away from the camera, looking off into the distance at something we cannot see. His thumb wraps down over the camera's clicker, which trails out of the lower corner of the image. San wears a Mao suit. An, un an unidentifiable identification badge and glossy black shoes. His posture is rigid, feet pressed tightly together. A costume Mickey strikes a relaxed pose next to him, waving quickly. Sam doesn't seem to acknowledge the animated rodent. <laughs> Behind the pair are striped umbrellas and a collet awning. Sam's austere communist costume is perhaps what catches the eye at first so seemingly out of place in this American amusement park. Or maybe it is Sang's expression, so fixed and enigmatic. Or perhaps it doesn't matter. Now, all I can see is Sang's fist. The fist is peripheral, it's true. But its peripherality is part of his intrigue. Why does it take so long to see how tightly the cable release is clutched? Why does it take so long to see how many images of in Sang's series feature that gesture? Rather than dismiss this peripheral gesture, I argue that focusing on it opens up a speculative field of possibility in theorizing the art's production of marginalized and diasporic subjects. My work is concerned with the use of gesture as a methodology of chronopolitical resistance. This project examines the work of artists Tina, um, Tina Sakamoto, Sang Kwang Chi, and Wu Tsang to point to what spaces and times the gesture of the fist opens up. These artists warp what scholar Jose Esteban Munoz defines as straight time into a sort of queer time. Queer time is not teleological or rational in the Enlightenment sense. Straight time signals not just a kind of sexuality, but more of a linearity. Munoz, quote, thinks of queerness as a temporal arrangement in which the past is a field of possibility in which subjects can act in the present in the service of a new future. Munoz's framing of queerness as a field removes us from the linear aspect of straight time and also allows time to open up. While the photograph might seem like a moment frozen in time, it also simultaneously unfurls time and space. I argue that chronotopic warp to gesture is a subtle resistance of the representation of certain bodies. Possibility blooms in the chisera of a liminal photographed gesture, caught in between one doesn't know if the gesture will end or if it will follow through. Performance artist and photographer San Kwang Chi is generally discussed in terms of the performative dimensions of his Mao suit and playfully staged images. The suit served as a ticket to hyperstratified social spheres, and uh, for example, Sang crashed the Manchu dragon uh, themed Met Gala <laughs> wearing the suit. Um, pretending to be a, like a dignitary, and uh, Yves Saint Laurent told him that he spoke French beautifully. <laughs> um, and here, the suit points to Orientalism and other aims in the Western context. It's no wonder Sang's clenched fist is considered liminal within commentaries on his work when a suit like this looms so large. Within Sang's oeuvre, the gesture is at the periphery of each image. The gesture is partially utilitarian, but its intensity confers a kind of insistence. Here, Elizabeth Freeman's concept of temporal drag offers a useful entry point into thinking about Sang Huang Chi's work. Sang does not um, engage in gender transitive drag or even just racial drag. His drag engages with his own personal history, but also the larger cultural understanding of Chineseness. His temporal drag sorts with disjunctions, moments that are both past and present. Sang's use of the Mao suit temporally drags the viewer through space and time. The formal similarity of each of his photographs confuses the, confuses the ability to recognize the passage of time. The iconic monuments, landscapes, and lack of other people generally make temporally and historically locating Sang's work rather difficult. While the spaces of Sang's photographs are readily recognizable, their time is nebulous. 
The loose serialization of Spang series drags time beyond the moment to moment of everyday life into a messy, uneasy stretch. The flow of time in the series does not allow for the viewer to fix Spang's work within a certain moment, unsettling constructions of narrative and cultural stereotyping. In this iteration of his New York, New York photographs, Sang Kwang Chi merely touches the viewer. The fist breaks the plane of the picture and interrupts the, inter the expected interaction between viewer and image. Typical portraits might include eye contact, but Sang refuses to gaze and instead turns to touch. The touch of the fist through the frame of the foot of the image spatially disturbs the encounter, putting him at odds with the building. This juxtaposition between suit and building, fist and building, touch and gaze, temporally and formally unbalances Sang's relationship to the monuments. Sang's gesture is part of this uneasy temporal and spatial relationship. It is not meant to occlude the temporal and racial drag. Instead, it is a substantial part of this chronotropic war. Strange time and space, queer times and spaces, are not made simply by donning a mouse suit, but also through the juxtaposition of the bold statement with his liminal gesture. The mouse suit is perhaps the more obvious or resistant semiotic. Although the fist seems an odd gesture to focus on, hands play a larger role within Asian dice work art history. Um, Muja is a really great example of this. Here's a, a diagram of some uh, Sri Lankan sculpture um, Muja. In this regard, the liminal fisting gesture reveals more than just narratives of sexuality, temporality, and political economy, but also their ever-present intersections with narratives of race and culture. Liminality then offers a particular metaphor for understanding diasporic Asian experience in relation to both time and space. Liminality encompasses both the threshold and passage movement. In other words, liminal space is at the edge, so to speak, but is also an entrance. Diasporic Asian bodies travel between edge and entrance in a temporal and spatial relationship that is unfixed. The liminal space between past and present is made possible in part by the gesture. Contemporary performance artist Tina Takamoto also picks up the gesture of the fist in her 2011 performance piece, Looking for Judo. Takamoto wields the fist as an insistence of the power of speculative pasts and times. Takamoto's speculative performance engages methodologies of genealogy and temporally triangulated affect. In Looking for Judo, Takamoto performs as Jiro Onuma, a Japanese-American gay man in turn during World War II. She dances to a lip-sync rendition of Madonna's Hung Up, mashed up with Adam's Gimme Gimme, A Man After Midnight. Takamoto's response to Onuma's archive <laughs> at the San Francisco TLPT Museum gesturally reimagines queer diasporic Asian art history. In this performance, Takamoto dramatically whips away a white cloth to reveal two perfectly braided lobes of dough. She creases her arms thoroughly with Crisco before turning to face the camera and audience. She paces, places a bracing hand on the lobes and sweeps her left arm out before steadily penetrating the middle of the lobe with her hand. Curling her hand into a fist, she flexes the bread upon her bicep. <laughs> she begins to flex and mimics the poses of a bodybuilder, the lobes as muscles. The film repeats this gesture in slow motion. The different time signatures of Takamoto's performance are contrasted to the quotidian repetitive nature of a work in internment camps. Time seems to stretch out as the time signature of this particular type of desire, of the repetitive baking action of the queer desire, is slow and lingering. Not only does looking for judo connect with the audience and the audience's experiences of this particular form of queer desire, it also connects historically to Jiro himself and to queers before. In a triangulation of desire, Takamoto connects to Jiro, to the audience, and back and forth. The gesture interrupts the linear understanding of history in which events happen one after another. Instead, we are caught up in constellatory desire, in which desire happens as emotional and affective traces. Takamoto also triangulates affect through formal tactics. She makes looking for Jiro queer through repetition of gesture. 
She alternates between speeding up and slowing down footage, creating an uneven temporal landscape. Takoda's editing techniques, quote, create strange juxtapositions, as she puts it, and disrupt the temporality of internment. These techniques unsettle what Elizabeth Freeman calls chrononormativity, the systemic normalization of modern domestic time. This conceptualization of time is marked specifically in relation to productivity. A body's productivity is measured in part with its ability to, rank, to sync up with chrononormative time, and in which time itself has a sense of productivity. Therefore, bodies associated more closely with the modern, such as queers, are seen as outside of chrononormativity. Queers fail to sync with eternal, domestic, heterosexual time. Queer bodies often marked as reproductively unproductive, thus point to the constructed nature of tick tock time. By reversing, changing tempo, and generally formally undoing propaganda footage, Takamoto makes apparent and disrupts the chrononormative space and time of internment. The source of gesture's power is its repetition, repetition passed down through body to body transmission as history. Speculative performances can interrupt straight time and typical understandings of genealogy. Gesture as speculation allows one to stretch back into the past and also into the alternative time-space dimensions. Gesture in the case of Takamoto's performance also becomes a kind of speculative archive. It becomes an archive of events that could have been. Gesture and performance are the remains of history, the flesh of speculative past, presence, and future. Wu Song's 2010 Neon Sculpture, The Fist is Still Up, also gestures to radical futures, present tenses, and pasts. The sign evokes a present and future tense of the gesture of the fist. Song is a contemporary artist based in Los Angeles who has been featured in the 2012 Whitney Biennial and the 2014 Hammer Museum Made in LA exhibition. The sign is often displayed in conjunction with Song's installation, Not in My Language which is based on Song's 2012 film, Wildness. Wildness explores Song's relationship to the Silver Platter, an historic queer bar um, founded in 1963 in the MacArthur Park neighborhood of Los Angeles. Here's a still from Wildness, and you can see the Silver Platter sign. The sign stylistically mimics the bar's exterior, historic exterior sign, down to the Art Deco embellishments. It evokes the minimalist aesthetics of neon sign art with a patently queer political message. The light itself and the shadows play with depth and flatness. However, the fist is still up, is still a sign. It is a marker, a signpost, if you will, for a politic that gestures beyond itself. Still speaks to the endurance of resistance. The fist has never gone down. The durée of the word still points to the lingering affects and effects of the gesture of the fist. While the fist is still up does not depict an actual fist, it invokes many fists. The thought of the fist transmits without the visual. While depicting the fist up, so to speak, in an image might have had a strong visual impact, words allow for a different kind of duration. The sign is thus not only a metaphor for futurity, but also served as a signpost for a space that provided resources to underserved communities. The fist is still up marks contemporary resistances to straight time and signals that queer diasporic subjects still seek liberation, still find ways to resist. <clears throat> These artists' works are very much about not so distant pasts that bubble up just under the surfaces of their presence. Seng Huang Chi, Tina Takamoto, and Wu Song offer us opportunities to think critically about how the gesture of the fist can warp time and space as a liberation practice. The diasporic Asian fist has the opportunity to free time through asexual triangulations and queer genealogies. These artists are refusing typical understandings of diasporic Asian gender and sexuality. Sang's fist opens up time, Takamoto's fist is patently queer, and Sang's fist is liberatory. Their iterations of the gesture implicitly resist the stereotypical ageless image of the martial arts master in which diasporic Asians are undifferentiated and monolithic. In, these context, in the context of these artists, a liberatory gesture is a gesture that frees bodies from the oppressiveness of the current moment. 
The gesture of the fist has the potential to liberate subjects from the straight time through which queer bodies are often required to conform. The gesture, along with temporal and gender transitive drag, becomes modalities through which to disrupt the linear flow of time. While these artists use past temporalities as their medium, their liberatory potential is in the alternative chronotopes they create with those past moments. The past becomes the material of the present and future. As Sam's minimalist Neon Sign reminds us, the fist is still up, and queer guys work people are still fighting for their own time. 